So our last myth we're going to talk about before we give you some actions are specifically around the whole concept of evolving from a job and into a career. So a, a job is a point in time and a career is a continuum. And I'm going to let you kick this one off specifically just so we can make sure we get to the salient points on this one before the recommendations. OK, so when we're talking about the career being a continuum, um, what we're really talking about is if you look at back at your jobs or your set of jobs, you can understand how you got to where you are now, even though the, the jobs that you took might have been random and might not exactly been planned out. But if you look back at the map you've drawn to get to where you are, you can somewhat get an understanding of where you're going to go. Now, when we come back to that idea of IT being problem solving, you will have worked out that at the beginning of my career, I was reactively solving a certain type of job. And as I got more skilled, as I became more knowledgeable, I began to solve bigger and more complicated problems. And that's the arc of where your career is going. You should never be just solving the same set of problems all the time. You should always be increasing the scope and increasing the quality of your toolkit. When we're young, we have a lot of what we call fluid intelligence. And fluid intelligence is the ability to sort of nut something out, to reason very quickly and figure out, given just what we've got in front of us, how we solve a problem. But through the experience of solving problems over the course of decades, we build up what's called crystallized intelligence. We build up strategies for solving problems. So instead of just randomly throwing things at the wall to see what solves the problem, we've seen enough problems and we've seen what solving a problem incorrectly does that we actually approach it in a better way. And this comes back to this idea of why, why a surgeon is at the peak of their career in their mid 40s. Why? Because they've made mistakes and they know how to not make those mistakes. The accountant knows what the mistakes are, what the pitfalls are. And that's what we're talking about when you're thinking of a career as a continuum. You won't know exactly what you're going to be doing in five years, but you want it to be that in five years, you can look back and you can see how the dots align to have got you to where you are. When you're a junior, you're solving problems that are brought to you. When you are moving towards the later phase of your career, you should be able to look at the environment and actually discover problems that need to be solved that no one else has actually seen that would overall benefit your organisation, that will bring your organisation forward because you actually understand how everything fits together. And that is also part of the continuum, which is your career. Yeah, the, uh, we use that a lot in our career discussions at Microsoft about, again, being more junior in your career. You're reacting to things, you're getting things solved and, and being a high performer. But people are telling you what's wrong or, or you, you identify what's wrong quite quickly. You haven't taken a step back to look at the bigger picture and find things that were wrong that no one else has identified before. And we call that principle level thinking to get into that next level of band as an example for where Warren sits right now. Um, and this obviously also applies to this, the complexity of how complex these problems are, but then also, even though you may not be a people manager, the nuance of being able to influence others without having direct influence on them, influencing others without direct authority, I think is the proper term in my manager training, um, that uh, it is also demonstrates the skills that you would have learned growing up through working in different teams and different things inside of IT. Now, again, being mindful of time, we have some recommendations and some action items that you can go off and use to apply towards this. And so the first one that we wanted to go off and to share is figuring out and defining your problem solving strategy and then how you can improve upon this. Oren, your thoughts? Problem solving strategies are one of the skills that you want to improve. I talked about that in the continuing education one. 
So treat it as a skill and go and think about when you walk out of this session or when you go home from Tech Mentor, how am I going to become a better problem solver? And some of that you will have done simply through experience. You would have gone from just trying whatever came to mind to collecting evidence and looking at the evidence and then trying hypotheses in your mind before trying to implement a fix in production. You learn very quickly not to implement a fix in production without actually knowing exactly what you're going to do. But there's some people who take a little while longer on their career arc, if they've got a long career arc, to actually figure that out. Just remember, it's easier to make things worse and it's harder to make things better. So that might be one of the things. Just think about how you solve problems. And maybe one of the changes you do is you say, right, I'm going to get much better at actually gathering evidence and forming a hypothesis instead of doing type one thinking, which is, oh, I know what it is. It's that. That might work right at the beginning of your career. But as the problems you are solving get more complicated, generally, there's not going to be an easy fix. It's a longer way of also saying the whole adage that I use in my leisure time when I do carpentry work, which is measure twice and cut once. You know, want to make sure you're going to be doing the right thing, solving those problems, because once you make that cut, you can't stretch wood to make it so that it fits into something else. Um, but the, 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 to build on this whole concept of problem solving and how you can improve upon it is leading us to our second item that we have uh, to share, which is starting to deal with systemic problems rather than point in time. So this is an escalation of the scope of the type of problems that you're going to be uh, attacking because of uh, always having them come back and always having them come back and dealing with them because you don't have the time to deal with them because of the pressures and instead stepping back and reviewing this to go ahead and make this response. This actually came to light to me just as a nice simple little series of tweets from a friend of mine that works on the Azure uh, not the Azure, the, um, the regular Active Directory team on Windows Server was dealing with crit sick cases, about 100 of them a month, with regards to machines that would go into an infinite reboot loop because a configuration change had taken place. It was not accepted by the system that it was working with, and it would literally bring this domain controller back into this reboot loop, and it wouldn't initialize anymore. A systemic problem like that, the fix is, well, if it doesn't work and instead of failing and is rebooting again, stick in a default configuration so that at least can come back up and you can diagnose it. That's one example of a systemic problem. But Oren, you've got some better examples and some, some growth opportunities on this and also ties into our third point, which I'll leave till we get to that third slide. Okay, so very shortly, your experience and understanding of how a technology stack solves important problems for your organization is what makes you valuable to them. So we are all worried about, are we going to get laid off? Or, you know, if there's a reduction in headcount, am I going to be the one reduced? Your value to the organization isn't that you just know how this technology stack works. It's that you know how this technology stack solves problems for your organization. And you can also figure out how this existing technology stack can be solved, used to solve other problems for your organization. And if you can do that, you're far more valuable than someone who just understands the technology stack, but doesn't understand the context into which it's deployed. And that brings us to our last piece of information or suggestions or recommendations to, for people to go off and to share. And this is a one that's near and dear to my heart as well, which is figuring out how to bring others up to where you are inside of your organization helping others figure out what you figured out so that they can go further too. So this isn't just about that sort of touchy-feely, sort of bring others along and you will be happy yourself. No, what it's about is that by explaining things, you understand where your own holes in your understanding are and you improve your understanding. Now, another thing in making yourself valuable to your organization is that if you are the person that people come to to learn how the organization and the technology stack works, that makes you infinitely really valuable because they can always replace someone else who knows that technology stack, but they can't replace the person who can teach 
someone how the context of the organisation and how it interacts with that technology stack. So as you move towards the twilight phase of your career, become a mentor and learn how to teach others so that they understand all of that crystallized intelligence and that you're able to pass on that crystallized knowledge to them so that they are more effective. Your organization is going to be much more effective if all of the components of people that you work with are at their peak. And the more that you can do to help that, the more valuable you are to your organization. So we're at time. We just hit noon almost on the dot. And I wanted to at least uh, leave you with some, again, contact information. I lead a team of people across the world that go off and create content, speak at conferences, do blog posts, working with engineering teams. One of the things that we do is we also bring feedback back to the engineering teams and back to the organization that is Microsoft to get real world perspective to improve things within our products as well. It's been great chatting with you all and giving us your attention.